PRTG is installed, remote probe set up. Let's get some sensors going. Let me just bring you back to what we got right here. Take a look. We've got the hosted probe. This is the one that's actually hosting the entire PRTG service. This is a hosted version of PRTG. So it's sitting out here in, in Germany or Europe somewhere, right? And in the last video of this, I installed a remote probe called AZ Jeremy's house. Now, as soon as I did that, first thing that happened is it popped up the probe device. So this is the Windows computer that's running the probe software and then it ran an automatic network discovery. Now, I've got to tell you, <laughs> don't, don't look at it. I'll, I'll fade to the video for just a second. Any, anytime I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on a website or anything and it's like, oh yeah, we will just auto, we have one click to auto, you'll never have to worry. Just, just don't believe it. Auto discovery is a cool feature, but the only way, and I, I I'm going to stand by this, the only way I feel to really get your monitoring system done well is a lot of manual involvement. Now there's two ways that you can do that. Um, one is let auto discovery do its thing. And let, let me show you why I'm like, Ugh, and like, so, so this is just my house, right? It's like, okay, found some network infrastructure device, you know, found a VMware server, found stuff and stuff and, and some stuff, you know, because I've got, I've, I've got a ton of stuff here and, 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 you know, some had SSL search and HTTP. It's just stuff and stuff and stuff. So, so most of the time when I'm like, when I see that, I'm like, I, I have to clean all that up. Like, oh, uh, I'd, I'd much rather, what the way that I use auto discovery is I'll put in a new device one at a time and say, discover that and, and see what it does. And I'm like, okay, great. Once I get the feel for that device type, because a lot of times I'm installing a ton of the, the same device, you know, my house somewhat, but more so at, uh, you know, client sites when I'm putting in 50 switches or a hundred WAPs, you know, it's the same, the same, the same. So that's where you can create those templates. But when I see stuff like this, I'm like, ah, no, that's, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go shoop and shrink that down. And I'm gonna create my own little world. So I'm gonna come underneath uh, Arizona's, uh, sorry, Jeremy's house. Let me, let me shrink down. On this network discovery. So this is a group of devices, right? And also when it auto discovers, it's setting off alarms like, hey, you know, this has the wrong cert, you know, this is expired. And so, so I just, I don't like auto discovery. <laughs> I think I've communicated that enough. So, so let me go in here and I'm going to add a group and I'm going to start off with uh, WAPs, All right? So let's, let's just do uh, wireless access points because, you know, it's a group. It's got to sound good. Um, points, uh, points. Uh, so, so underneath here, this is where we can configure all the credentials. Now I will say one of the reasons that my auto discovery was so lame is because I didn't have any credentials typed in here. I just installed the remote probe and it's like, I'm going to town doing pings, doing port scans. Right. But it doesn't have SNMP credentials. It doesn't have SSH credentials. doesn't have windows credentials, nothing. So it's just hitting wall after wall after wall. And it's like, Hey, I see a bunch of stuff. So auto discovery will be a lot have a lot more flair, I'll say, if you put some credentials in. But again, this is where I love going one at a time. So, so let me show you how to set up SNMP sensors, right? This is, this is your bread and butter of monitoring. The simple network management protocol is, is your way of just saying, I want to monitor that specific element, that element, that element. Let me show you. So I'm going to come back here. Um, and most of my house is ubiquity equipment. Uh, so I'm going to go to uh, my devices. You can see there's my switches. I've got uh, some wireless access points uh, spread across the house. Um, so what I'm, the first thing I'm going to do uh, is turn on SNMP. So I'm going to come over here to the settings, SNMP, uh, right there, SNMP version 1, version 2. Um, and you can see, you know, there's version 3, which adds authentication encryption. You know, even, even with all that, I find myself most of the time using version two, just because it's, it's so easy, right? It, so, but version three is a little bit more secure, but it's my house, right? So default community string is mostly public. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm, for now, for this video, I'll just use uh, kitsim. Keep it simple. One, two, three exclamation point. Sound good. Uh, hit apply. Now, you know, the way ubiquity works is it's controller based, right? The controller uh, then goes and notifies all the devices. So they're, they're all getting their updates. They're being reprovisioned. Um, and they will have that. So, so now let me, um, let me start off with this guy. This is my upstairs wireless access point, 192.168.1.216. And, and by the way, you want to make sure that you've got a DHCP reservation or a static address put in there for that. Because if the IP changes, if you leave it on DHCP, your monitoring system is going to be like, bah, it's down, right? So, so I'm going to remember that 192.168.1.216, uh, put that on my clipboard. 
uh, jump over here to the monitoring system. And first off, I'm going to come under the wireless access points and I'm going to set the SNMP credentials for this entire group. So since it's loading, I'll come back here. Okay. It's almost done. So <laughs> hit enter and, and see if I, there we go. It's coming up. So I'm going to click on the settings and come down here to credentials for SNMP. Now the beauty is by setting it here, anything that I add to that group is going to be uh, what will inherit those credentials. So I'm gonna do kitsim, one, two, three, exclamation point, right? Save. Uh, so now the monitoring system that I have right here is gonna match what I just configured in the Ubiquiti side. And you can see some of these things are gray because they're offline, they rebooted after they were uh, configured. So I'm gonna go into uh, now, now, hang on. I want to make sure you get familiar with this structure. You see this? This is Jeremy's house. So, so where it's almost like a folder structure, right? Up here, we've got um, uh, the devices. So if I go back to the root up here, this is kind of PRTG as a whole. Over here is my server way in, in Europe somewhere. This is the probe of my house. And then I'm coming down here under wireless access points, and you can see it. It's kind of fanning out where I am under each one of these. That's huge for your navigation, right? So I'm going to add a device, and this is where... Uh, auto discovery comes in really handy. So I'm, I'm just going to say this is uh, upstairs, right? Upstairs. And I'll, uh, you know, I'll just say, yes, go ahead and inherit the credentials from wireless access points. That's fine for SNMP, right? And boom, just like that, we've run, we've added our first um, uh, auto discovered SNMP device. Notice right here, run auto discovery. It's going to run. Let me pause the video while it does that. Okay, I'm just going to bring it back because notice we're about 8% in, and that's just PRTG running through all of its management information base. I mean, essentially, SNMP has a ton of different options, so it's trying each one of those against that wireless access points and finding out what it finds. This is where this is where I like auto discovery because I'm like, oh, wow, I, I didn't know that existed. That's kind of cool, and it, and it discovers things, but it's going to have way more, typically, than you would want to monitor. The thing that drives me nuts, <laughs> I, should, I should stop saying that, like I've gone through this, I've done this, um, but a lot of times I see network administrators that'll just leave it. They don't even know what most of these sensors are and they'll just, they'll just leave everything, which just makes it a big clutter and we don't want to do that. So, so again, we're about, I would say 60 seconds into the auto discovery process. Notice it's just finding them. It hasn't actually done scans on them yet. Otherwise you would see the status. All right, there we go. It looks like the auto discovery is done. And a couple, hang on, a couple things I wanna wanna make sure you guys catch about all of this. One, when an auto discovery happens, uh, know that first of all, it may not list all the sensors that are available. This is just what PRTG has in its database: common sensors, common uh, uh, um, OIDs, uh, object identifiers. That's that's what makes SNMP tick, right? That a lot of devices use. So. Oftentimes, it may behoove you to, to look at the vendor documentation and say, like, like for instance, uh, looking at this, this is my, my upstairs wireless access point, right? I'm going to click on this, and it looks like we're getting data back from all the sensors now. Um, I might want to say, well, well, show me how many clients are attached on there, right? Well, the PRTG software may not have in its database of sensors, you know, for ubiquity, how many clients are on that wireless access point. So, so in this case, it may, it may not exempt that. So, I, or it may exempt that. So I might have to click on add sensor and manually add it in either via one of the sensors that are pre-created here. Although most of the time those are, those are going to show up with auto discover, or I do a manual SNMP sensor uh, or uh, 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 yeah, a sensor that will, will automatically go out and query the specific field that I get from Ubiquiti's documentation, right? So looking at this, I'm gonna say, okay, I don't wanna monitor the loopback. Uh, I don't know what RA1, uh, RA0 and RA1 is. I'm assuming that's, that's gonna be the different SSIDs maybe or different frequencies. Maybe one's 2.4, one's five gigahertz. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. Um, BR0, that's bridge zero, I'm, I'm, I don't need that. Uh, CPU load, I, I do want to see that. Uptime, 74 days, that's kind of cool to see. Um, so I can see if it's rebooting. Uh, memory, I don't, don't really care about, you know, I'm, I'm going to assume the wireless access points have enough memory to do what they need to do, right? So I'm going to go in and delete that. And now what I've got is a perfect fit for all of the future wireless access points that I install. Now, and the reason I'm, I'm showing you how to do this is number one, when you have a monitoring system, if it's just a mess, you're going to be getting alarms all the time popping up. You're like, what's that? What's that? I don't know. And it just becomes this, this like, blah, it, like, no, <laughs> blah. like, how do you describe it? Like, I, it's, it's not as valuable as if you've crisply tuned every single one of the sensors that you want, right? And then you'll get notified. 
Second reason you want to do this is oftentimes your license is based on the number of sensors that you have in there, along with consuming CPU and memory on your monitoring system. So why have extraneous uh, you know, things in there. So one of the reasons that I'm like, ah, auto discovery, it's just going to blah, you know, but like I've, I've had auto discovery throw 200 sensors on like a, a single uh, Linux box. I was one. I'm like, ah, you know, delete the whole, I just want five, you know, these are the things I really care about. Right. So, so that's adding our first access point. Let me, let me add in the rest. Ooh, and actually, before I do that, let me. Uh, you're gonna. This is where you get to see just how anal I am, and and you should be if you're gonna have a good monitoring system. Be this way. I'm gonna go to edit, rename, uh, because again, auto discovery fills in like this auto name device and all that. I'm just gonna say no. This is this is my upstairs. Uh, unify. Well, I'd, I'd I'd figure out my convention. Unify WAP upstairs Nano. Because I know it's going to sort it alphabetically, or I want it alphabetically, so I want all Unify WAPs. Same thing here. It's like, okay, th you know, I added a little sensor number there. I'm going to say, okay, this is, this is my uh, ETH zero traffic. I don't, I don't want any auto names. And again, so l actually, let me do this. I'm going to show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add one more WAP. I'm going to show you how to do it manually, which oh, it just warms my heart. All right, so I'll bring it back here. We've got now this Office Flex HD device, a little WAP sitting behind me in my office, 192.168.1.24. As a matter of fact, it's uh, this is a little glowing gem right here, right? So we'll add, we'll add that guy. So I'll jump back to PRTG, right-click, add device. Um, and again, I'm going to follow that same naming conventions, unify, uh, WAP, dash, ups, uh, actually, no, uh, Office uh, Flex, HD, right? Similar to the upstairs nano, you can see it really faded behind it. 192.168.1.24, uh, click on OK. And it's just going to add, I'm not going to hit the run auto discovery. I'm just going to right click on this, uh, hit add sensor. Comes up, says, well, what kind of sensor do you want? I'm going to type in, I want ping. Ping is the first one. Click on that. It's going to say, okay, well, what, uh, you know, what names, what settings, all that. I'm just going to say, hey, just, just create it. I want ping. You can say how many pings you want to send and all that, but the defaults are usually just fine for this. Uh, so notice I'm under the Office uh, Flex HD now. Right-click on this, add sensor. Um, what was the second one? I think it was uh, uh, the, the network card, right? So I'll do SNMP. Uh, traffic, that's going to be one of the common ones. It's going to actually query and show me all the interfaces that it's going to find on that web. Check it out. Uh, th oh, this is so great. Uh, remember I was just showing you a moment ago where I was, I was saying, hey, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have some things that aren't added here. Well, this is it. Now, now again, this is where you want to check the documentation that Ubiquity has to find out what is RAI0, RA0, RA1. I'm guessing those are the SSIDs, um, but Hey, check the documentation. Um, you can see down here, it's got some other ones. So, so again, aligning those to what those actually are, that's the job of vendor documentation. For now, I'm just going to add in the ETH zero traffic. I'll worry about the name in a second. Um, so good. Uh, I know the next one, I think, if I remember right, was uptime, right? You see, so, so first off, if you just think about how long we were standing there waiting for the auto discover to finish, you know, because a lot of people will be like, oh, it's so slow, you know, to, to manually create them. Well, maybe, but I mean, if you think about how long you're sitting there and then having to go back and delete and clean up and all that kind of stuff, I mean, okay, hang on, where, where are we? We've got the um, uh, upstairs nano and we've got, uh, oh, CPU load. So I'm going to go in here, right click, add a sensor, and I will do CPU. Or how about processor? Or how about SNMP? There we go. Uh, why am I not thinking of what I need right here? Oh, <laughs> good grief. I have it right cl uh, click the bullet on network infrastructure up here. There we go. CPU usage. Now I'll put uh, CPU, and we're going to see SNMP CPU load. Again, all of these are SNMP sensors that are in there. And... Uh, I'll just drop the SNMP so it's consistent with the other one and create. Now, what I'm showing you right now is manually adding the same sensors again and again. And that's this is where I can say, okay, well, on the other one, this is right here. You can reorder them. Uh, something like, uh, there we go. Rename this guy. Yeah. So we take off the uh, the numbering and the E0. And there, there are automated ways of doing all of these things. You can create templates and have it use the same ones, but that that is the same, it's the same process as the 
um, I shouldn't say the same process, but this, you end up with the same results as the auto discovery. It's just you get to manually add in exactly the sensors that you're looking for rather than you know having all this stuff added and then having to delete it in a second. So now, now let me go in and delete all of the, or delete, <laughs> add in all the other uh, SNMP WAPs that I have in my house. Oh, there's just so much I want to tell you. I, I got to bring you back one more time. So, so I talked about auto discovery, right? One way to add sensors, manually adding the sensors. Well, I went to the next one, my garage mesh access point, and it doesn't have an Ethernet connection. Uh, so I, you know, I added the bridge connections that that monitor the the, the bandwidth use that it's it's doing over wireless. Because again, it 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 extend. It's a mesh access point. It doesn't need a LAN connection. Uh, in that case, but one the third way. Let me give you the third way that you can you can add devices, and this is great when you've got your your perfect device templates, if you will. You can right click and just clone them. You can say, okay, let, you know, I've got my Flex HD. Let me let me do the next one. This will be uh, so we got the garage. We've got okay front porch. Uh, I've got a nano on the front porch at 143, right? Dot 143. So I'm going to say Unify WAP uh, front porch nano, right? Uh, 192.168.1.143, right? That was the IP, right? Uh, yep, got it. Now I can hit continue and boom, I've got the WAP right there with the sensors already put in. And again, as long as the device types are similar, it, it starts pause, you have to hit resume. But as long as the device types are similar enough, you can just replicate, replicate, replicate. And that way uh, you get just the sensors that you want instead of having to auto discover and delete them all down or rename them, right? Third way of doing it. All right, there we go. I've got all the wireless access points added for my house and I've got my first group added to PRTG. Now the next piece is gonna be, I'm gonna shrink this down. I'm gonna create one for the switches, one for the router, and then one for a lot of the other devices that we're gonna be adding to this. So, so where we're going is, I, I just showed you how to set up SNMP monitoring. And, and in some of the future videos, I might show you some of the other devices that I'm adding as well. Now I wanna start moving into some of the other sensors that you can add. And then I wanna start thinking about how do you organize these? Because even, even with my house, it's gonna start getting a bit unruly unless you come up with a strategy, much more so when you get into the business environment. Uh, you don't wanna have this giant mess of sensors. And then before long, have giant projects to reorganize and redo everything when you could have just done it right, right from the beginning. That being said, keep it simple.